My name is Karen Wilkie and I'm the Boone River Project Director for the Nature Conservancy in Iowa. Today we're in the Boone River Watershed. Welcome. Uh, this is a place where over 30 different partner organizations have come together for the last 17 years to help address water quality, flooding, and wildlife issues. Oxbows are old river meanders that get cut off from the main flow of the river. Healthy functional oxbows can provide really valuable benefits for water quality, wildlife, and flood water storage. However, over time, many of these oxbows fill in with sediment and cease to provide those benefits. And so that's where restoration comes into play. The restoration that we're at today was restored in 2017, about four years ago. Uh, when we came to this site, it was not holding any water, was not really providing those benefits that it used to provide. And so um, we came out, we, it's, ba it's pretty basic. It's not a really engineered practice. We dug out the soil that had filled in over the years and now it's holding water year round for wildlife. There's a natural connection to the creek. So anytime it floods, that water comes in, that allows the fish and wildlife to access the oxbow. Um, and then the flood waters recede and it's the standalone habitat in the floodplain. This oxbow is about a quarter acre in size, which is just perfect for supporting the federally endangered Topeka shiner. We want them to be small so that predatory fish don't come in and gobble them up. It's about three feet deep. I would say on average, they're three to five feet that we have to dig out for them to hold water year round so that they don't freeze in the winter and they don't dry up in the summer. On average, the cost to restore is about 10 to 15,000. This one, which is a quarter acre, it only costs 7,000 to provide these really great benefits on the landscape. We're monitoring this site for both water quality and fish wildlife habitat. We're trying to see if the water coming in from tile into this oxbow, how much is being treated by naturally filtered by this oxbow. And so we've got tile coming in from the farm behind us. It's being intercepted by this oxbow and held and naturally filtered before it gets into the creek. This site has tile coming off of the farm ground flowing into the oxbow, which holds that water and filters it through denitrification before it gets into the creek. On average, our research has shown that 42% of the nitrates that come off of that farm field get processed by this oxbow before it gets into the creek. Our Oxbow project in the Boone has been a really great collaboration of so many different partners that have brought different expertise and funding together to piece together all of the great benefits that Oxbows are providing. So we're partnering with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Iowa State University, Iowa Soybean Association, and so many more to get the research done to really show the benefits that these restorations are having, as well as inform future restorations to maximize the benefits that we're getting out of these restorations. Oxbows are typically not in agricultural land, so it's a really easy sell for the landowners. No land needs to be taken out of production. And it's typically right along the stream, so it's land that's not really being used anyways. And look at how beautiful we can make it through restoration. This is just increasing the aesthetic and conservation value of the land and provides a really great space for people to get out and enjoy nature. Here we're at an unrestored oxbow and one that really does need restoration. It's not holding water or providing the benefits that it really could be providing. So once we find a potential oxbow with an interested landowner, and we've discussed the goals that that landowner has for that land, then we'll wanna go out to the site to actually visit it. We wanna see that restoration is feasible, that it would be beneficial, and then it would help us prioritize if we have different restoration sites to compare, which one would be the most beneficial to restore. So once we're at the site, there's a lot of different things that we'll look for that would help us prioritize this site for restoration. One being, is it already holding water? Is it already providing benefits? This one's clearly not holding water. Another one is, is there the opportunity for tile to come in and be intercepted by the oxbow? Another is, are there any beneficial wildlife that would really benefit from us restoring the oxbow? Or consequently, are there any that would be harmed by restoration? So right here, we've got Topeka Shiner habitat in the creek right here. So we know, or we believe, if we restore this oxbow, they're gonna utilize that habitat. Another thing we wanna think about is what is the current land use and what is the future land use? This right here is in pasture, so we're gonna to wanna to make sure we include characteristics to this restoration that will be conducive to cattle accessing that water and not um, eroding the banks too much. So we'll do really gentle slopes. 
we'll want to look and see, does this oxbow naturally connect to the creek? Or are we going to have to somehow artificially connect it during floods? Also, is there an easy way for heavy equipment to get in that won't be so harmful to the land? Where can the soil be put? If it's close, we've got a farm field right here. Oftentimes it's nice black dirt, we can just put and spread the dirt right in the adjacent farm field. If we have to haul it far, it's going to increase the cost. Another thing that could increase the cost is if there's a lot of trees. Obviously this site doesn't have any trees, so that really um, helps us use our money more wisely and get us the best conservation bang for the buck. Finally, we'll want to look at potential risk of sedimentation in the future. Is there a lot of erosion coming off the landscape? Or is the creek, the force of the creek coming, going to come straight into the oxbow and potentially fill it in with the sediment that the creek is carrying? After we've decided that the site is, would be beneficial to restore, we're going to want to come out and do a survey of the site to collect elevation data in order to create designs and know how deep to dig the oxbow. The land will need to be surveyed by survey grade or laser level equipment in order to collect elevation data. Of course, a professional um, will need to do this or at least have an engineer stamp off to make sure that um, all of your data is accurate so that we're not creating any issues. Um, this can be done by NRCS, Nature Conservancy, Fish and Wildlife. There's a lot of different partners who are out there to help with these restorations. A couple different elevation data that you're going to want to make sure you capture are cross sections across the potential oxbow that you're going to be restoring, at least at every topography change or every 100 feet. This one's pretty much the same across the board, so, you know, wouldn't change very much. You'll want to collect elevation data of the adjacent creek as well. That'll show how deep we are going to want to restore the oxbow. What is the current width and top width and bottom width of the adjacent creek? That might tell us how wide we want to plan this restoration so that we can account for how much water is going to be coming down that river and coming into the oxbow. And then we'll also want to do a center line down the deepest part of the oxbow so that we know where that deepest spot is going to be. And all of this data is going to feed into our design. From start to finish, from the site visit until you're done with the restoration, would typically take about a year. It takes quite a while to get permits in place and do the survey and design, but then the actual digging and restoration with the heavy equipment takes less than a week, depending how, how big it is. So it's a pretty quick and easy restoration practice. So we've restored likely over 150 oxbows across Iowa. And over the last 20 years, we found two inches of sedimentation out of the five feet on average that we dig out. So we're hopeful that this restoration practice will be on the landscape for a very, very long time and we'll get to enjoy those great benefits. Oxbows are not unique to the Boone River watershed. They are found across Iowa and beyond and there are potential for restorations across Iowa and beyond. And so there's a lot of different organizations that can help with technical assistance and financial assistance. So check your local NRCS offices and try to find those partners who can help restoration.